Welcome to our Trauma Healing Program and thank you for joining me. My name is Ayo Ulubusi. This Trauma Healing Program is a production of the Bible Societies. These programs help you recognize trauma in yourself or in others. But what is trauma? Trauma results when you experience something which you cannot keep from happening. It may follow a conflict or a natural disaster or even physical abuse. You find you are no longer able to cope with life in the same way as before. You may experience a feeling of hopelessness and fear. These trauma healing programs reveal biblical principles that lead to healing and allow you to live fully once again. Today, we will discuss what happens when someone is grieving. The story of Pastor Indri is a story of loss and grieving. In the Boka district of Bingola, there had been fierce fighting. Many people had been killed, including women and children. Indri was the pastor of a large church in the main town. As the situation in the area got worse, more and more of his church members were killed. He and his wife, Lydia, eat in their house. Lydia, we're leaving tonight. The fighting is getting worse. We have no other choice. Hurry, prepare food and supplies. Oh, okay. I will call the people now. We only have a few hours to leave. Oh, oh my God. That night, nearly 100 people gathered in the bush and began their journey into the next country. But soon, people became sick, including Lydia. I feel so weak to carry on. Let me rest here, Hindri. Ah. I beg you. Let me rest. Oh, no. And when I'm better, I'll come to you. Ah, no, no. No, Lydia. Oh. We will not leave you behind. Just rest tonight. In the morning, we will feel better. But because they had no medicine for her, Lydia died that night. Her husband looked helplessly home. Pastor, our hearts are heavy. <laughs> we must keep moving, brother. We still have so far before we reach safety. With danger threatening them, the church members had to bury Lydia quickly in the bush and they continued their journey. After three weeks, many others, especially the children and the elderly, became sick. Six more people died. When they finally arrived in the next country, the church welcomed them and helped them find food and work. They began to rebuild their lives. Each day, and especially on Sundays, they met together to pray and read God's word. People came to Pastor Indri for help with their problems. Pastor, I am unable to sleep at night. I imagine myself back home with my family. They tell me my husband is gone. But he's here. I can hear him talking to me. Well, this is hard, my sister. But God has a plan. He will help you. He will help us. <sighs> if only I had the thought to take some medicine with us, my wife would have been alive today. What was I thinking? Traveling through the bush without any medicine. Come on, it's not your fault, my brother. It's not your fault. My son, my son, he's coming tonight. Don't tell me he's dead. Get the devil behind you. Some of the people wouldn't try to find work or even help to find food. In dream, Sev was overwhelmed by a deep sadness. At night, he woke up sobbing and crying for his wife. <laughs> oh God, oh God, I am your 
your servant. How could you take my lovely Linda away? I just wanted to help you people. <laughs> because he couldn't show this hunger openly, it burned him inside and gave him bad headaches and stomach aches. What's wrong with me? I am a Christian. I must not cry. I should be joyful. I have to be strong. That afternoon, as he was walking through the town, he saw a woman that looked just like his beloved Lydia. Ah! Oh dear Jesus! No! Oh no! <laughs> oh no, 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 no! He hurried back home, shut himself in his bedroom, and cried and cried. After that, he slept heavily for many hours and the next morning woke up feeling somewhat better. That is the story of Pastor Indri. Have you ever felt like him that God has abandoned you? This is a common reaction after we experience trauma. Listen to James, Stephen, Magdalene and Rebecca as they discuss this story. Indri and his people were really changed by what had happened to them. Mm, yeah. Now, let's think about this. What do you think made it hard for them to grieve their losses? Magdalene? Well, they couldn't do the normal burial and funeral ceremonies. Mm. That made it so difficult for them to move on, you know? Mm. Mm. And many of them didn't see the bodies of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. So how could they be sure they were mm. dead? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think also it was so hard for them because they had lost a lot of things mm. in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Mm. They saw people being killed. <sighs> they saw blood. And now they are refugees in another country. Sad. Mm. So sad. sad. Uh, let's think about Pastor Andrew. Uh, the church members came to Pastor Indri to talk about their feelings, mm. but he held his feelings inside. Mm. How did that affect him, Magdalene? It didn't help him at all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Finally, he, could hold, he couldn't hold it inside any longer, and he cried and cried. Hmm. It didn't help him at all. Yeah. Finally, he couldn't hold it inside any longer, and he cried and cried. Mm. Uh, and how did he feel after he cried? Phew. Somewhat better. Relieved. More peaceful. Yes. Mm. Now, we grieve when we lose loved ones. Yeah. 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 yeah, we do. But we can also grieve the loss of other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are the other things we can grieve? Jobs. Yes, yes. And houses too. Yeah. Friendships. Yeah. It's normal. That hmm. when we lose someone or something we love, we feel sad. Yeah, yeah. It's like a journey through three villages. Three, three villages. villages? Yeah, three villages. Uh, the first village is called the village of deny and anger. Oh, okay, okay. At first, it's normal to deny that the loss has happened hmm. and to feel angry about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I guess that's like Pastor Andre's people. Mm -hmm. I, uh, those people who thought their loved ones hadn't died. Yeah, Stephen, they were denying that they were actually dead. Hmm. They were in denial. So that is the village called Denial and Anger. Hmm. Denial, and, denial anger. and Anger. Hmm. So those voices those people were hearing weren't even spirits or ancestors. No, hmm. no. Hmm. They were hmm. not spirits of ancestors, Rebecca. Hmm. <laughs> it's just them letting go of their loved ones little by little. Hmm. Hmm. That's right, James. I think, too, they were just sitting there doing nothing or not much. Maybe they were numb because they had lost so much. Hmm. That's yeah. true, Magdalene. It's so sad. So, we might stay in the village of denial and anger for a while after a loss. But after a while, we will move to the next village, village number two. Number two? Yes, village number two is called the village of no hope. What do you think happens there, Stephen? 
Sometimes people don't want to get out of bed mm-hmm. or wash mm-hmm. or even care about what they look like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they stop taking care of their families or doing their work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right, Stephen. And sometimes I have seen people turn to drugs and alcohol to mm-hmm. hide from their loss. Oh. They feel they have no hope. Yes, yes. yes. So sad. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they even want to kill themselves. Mm-hmm. They That's don't have any sad. desire to keep living. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With these losses, something in them has to die. Mm. Maybe the idea of who Mm. they were. Mm. Uh, Like, for example, the wife of someone, the father of someone, the director of something. Mm. Mm. It's like a wound healing. You want it to happen overnight, but it's not possible. Mm. So right. Uh, People may stay in the village of no hope for quite a while. Mm. uh, But at some point, uh, they are ready to move on. Mm -hmm. We are entering village number three. Okay, three is a village of new beginnings. A new beginnings. Yeah. Mm. Well, <laughs> what do you think happens in this village? Uh, it sounds like they begin life again, mm. a new life, yeah. like a revival of sorts. That's yeah. right, Magdalene. Mm. Uh, so, what might that look like, Stephen? Maybe they start taking care of themselves again. Yeah, yeah. you're right, Stephen. Mm. They might start being interested in different activities again. Yes, mm. Rebecca. It is true that with time and uh, if we grieve our losses, we can heal and move on in our lives. Mm-hmm. So, my friends, village number one was the village called what? Of denial, denial and, and anger. anger. Mm. Great. Then village number two was? The, the village, village of, of no, no hope. hope. Mm. So, James... To go through these villages is normal? Yes, these villages are normal and good. Hmm. Uh, But what is not good is to get stuck in these two villages. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. I see that. I see that. Yes. And sometimes on the anniversary of the loss, we might go back to village number one or village number two, Mm. but we don't stay there long. Okay. Mm. So, what are you saying, James? Is it that it's okay for people to feel those things after a loss, feeling denial, Mm. feeling like there is no hope? Mm. Exactly, Mm. exactly. But remember, Rebecca, Christians don't mourn like people without any hope. Mm. We can go back to village one, be in village two, but in the long run, we should move on. I know, I know it's only in heaven where there will be no more tears. Yeah, that's true. What do you think? And that's very true. That's Mm. very true, Stephen. Remember what Jesus said. Mm. As long as you are on earth, Mm -hmm. you will experience many troubles. Yeah, yeah. But don't be anxious because I have overcome the world. Praise him. Hallelujah. So in fact, people need to feel the pain of their loss in order for them to heal from it. Mm -hmm. Denying it doesn't help at all. It doesn't, James. It doesn't. You know, I feel that I have learned a lot from all of this. It's been so helpful. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Very yes. helpful. I'm glad this has helped. Thank you. So God. the next time you are grieving yeah. or you are going through a loss, hmm. cry it out and move on. Mm. Yeah. Do not stay in village one or village two, well, two yes. but go on to the village of... The, the, the village, village of, of new, new beginnings. beginnings. You are great yeah. students. Are you grieving a loss, even after many years? Do you need someone to talk to or someone to pray with you? Contact your local Bible society. Now, let's listen at one of the most remarkable stories in the Bible, a time when Jesus responded to the loss of a person he loved, a person like you and me. There was a man named Lazarus. He lived with his sisters, Mary and Martha. They were close friends of Jesus. One day, Lazarus became very ill. His sisters sent a message to tell Jesus that his good friend, Lazarus, was sick. But when Jesus got the news, he decided to stay where he was. His sickness won't end in death. It will bring glory to God. We will go to Lazarus' house in a couple of days. He waited a couple of days, and then he said to his disciples, Let's go to Lazarus' house. The people there wanted to stone you to death. Why do you want to go back? 
Lazarus is asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. The disciples did not understand what Jesus meant. Lord, if he's asleep, he will get better. Lazarus is dead. I am glad that I wasn't there, because now you will have a chance to put your faith in me. By the time they got to Lazarus' house, he had already been buried for four days. And many people had come to grieve with Mary and Martha. When Martha heard that Jesus had arrived, she went to meet him. Lord, if only you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Your brother will live again. Martha didn't really understand what Jesus meant. Lord, I know he will be raised on the last day when all the dead people are raised. Everyone who has faith in me will live, even if they die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. Martha still didn't understand what Jesus meant. But she went and told her sister, Mary, that Jesus was looking for her. Mary ran to Jesus, crying. <laughs> Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mary's tears broke Jesus' heart, and he felt the pain in the crowds of people who were weeping, and Jesus wept. The disciples were moved by Jesus' tears. Jesus went to the tomb. They had put the body of Lazarus in a small cave with a large stone blocking the entrance. Roll the stone away. Lord, you know that Lazarus has been dead for four days. It will smell bad. Didn't I tell you that if you had faith, you would see the glory of God? Then Jesus looked up. I thank you, Father, for answering my prayer. Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out. His hands and feet were still wrapped in the strips of clothes they buried him in. Untie him and let him go. Then from that day on, many people believed in Jesus. Do you know that in order to fully heal from loss, we must take time to grieve? Jesus himself grieved the loss of his friend. Listen to James, Stephen, Magdalene and Rebecca as they take a deeper look at this story. Wow, oh. what a powerful story. Hmm, yeah, a powerful yeah. story indeed. I will be honest, James. I wonder why Jesus waited for more than two days before he went to Lazarus. Hmm. I think Mary and Martha might have thought that he didn't care about them. Yeah. They thought he was their friend. What do you think, Rebecca? Hmm. Well, we all feel abandoned in our time of loss, especially if we are close friends. Hmm, yeah. It seemed that Lazarus, Martha, and Mary were close friends of Jesus. Yeah, hmm. yeah, they were. Hmm. Look, uh, before Jesus raises Lazarus from the grave, did you notice that Martha and Mary used the words, if only. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. If only you had been heir, my brother wouldn't have died. Yeah. Have there been times when you have said mm. those words, if only? Mm. Mm. Yes, James. My sister was sick and died. Oh, mm. oh, and so my sorry. family sorry spent that. a lot of time saying, if only she had told us that she was sick. Mm. If only she had take, we had taken her to the hospital sooner. Yes. My sister was sick and died, mm. and my family 
spent a lot of time saying, if only she had told us that she was sick, mm. if only we had taken her to the hospital sooner. Mm. So I really identify with Martha and Mary. Mm. You know, Rebecca, we want to blame ourselves for what happened. Mm. That's true. Mm. That's true. That's a normal response to loss. Yeah. Now, how did Jesus express his sadness? Mm. He cried. Yes. And he let other people see that he was sad. Mm. You see, guys, I find it very surprising Hmm. that he did this. Mm -hmm. In my culture, men don't cry. Uh, Uh, Especially not in public. Uh, We Mm. know, we know. And not in private either. I was taught this right from when I was a little Hmm. boy. Hmm. (laughs) Well, Jesus was a man and he Hmm. cried in public. Yes. Uh, Don't you think that men today can also cry? Hmm. Yes, James, I quite agree with you. Hmm. We should follow the example of Jesus and weep when we need to. Stephen, Mm. did you hear that? I agree with Magdalene. In my church, the leader teaches that Christians should not cry. But sometimes, tears come Mm. when we don't expect them. True. That is very sad in church, uh, where we should be teaching people to follow the example of Jesus Mm. Christ. Uh, When we are going through troubles... What should we do, Stephen? <laughs> well, from what I've seen in this story, I think you should let the tears flow. Ah, yes. Yes. yes, we should let the yes. tears flow. Let the tears flow. Let the tears, let the tears flow. flow. Grieving is an important part of healing from our pain. Jesus himself cried with agony at death. So, my friend, listen to this song. From Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 8, that lets you know there is a time to cry. What you face won't be forever. Ah, ah, ah. There is time for everything in this world. Ah, ah, ah. Time to burn, time to die. Time to grieve, wipe the tears from your eyes Rainy days and sunshine What you see now is for a while Time Hey friend, keep on keeping on The situation will never last long Time Never quit down, be strong the season will soon change again. Time. Stop it. Don't commit suicide. That's not the way out. Time. I don't know what is it by your time. I don't know what took away your smile. Do not let that to weigh you down For your time to rejoice is coming down Weeping may last through the night But joy will come in the morning Weeping may last through the night But joy will come in the morning Your situation will never last long. Be strong, never be weighed down. Soon you will smile again. Stop it. Do not commit suicide. That's not the way out. Jesus wept when he lost a loved one. His tears let you know that he understands your cries and your pain. His tears also invite you, his child, to bring your tears to him, our faithful comforter. We should let our pain out through tears too. Do you need someone to talk to or someone to pray with you? Contact us at your local Bible society. Join us next time as we look at healing the wounds of our hearts. I am Ayo Olubusi. God bless you.